Hey, this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling, with Platinum versus AEW Dynamite live in Miami. Um, this is from, of course, the 7th of July, 2021. I was there last night. They taped a, <laughs> a bunch of matches for almost an hour uh, for AEW Dark Elevation, and then they recorded more afterwards i'm here just to talk about dynamite though having a full crowd um outside as well i mean i mean outside the confines of jacksonville um it was really an experience <coughs> i've seen dynamite um recordings uh, at daily's place in jacksonville i saw them when they were very 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 particular about how many people could be there and so not many were i was there when they finally had like pay-per-views with uh, as full a crowd as they were going to get um so i've seen the sort of evolution of this and it's been really fun to watch the show opened huge and uh, what you didn't see was they actually opened before the show started um with QT coming out and cutting a promo, a really cheap heady kind of promo, making fun of the Miami Dolphins and all of this kind of stuff. And then as kind of a de facto punishment, Tony Khan said he had to stay out there and they were going to open with the strap match. So Cody got his big entrance on Dynamite. Um, then it happened. Um, Cody ended up winning. Um, QT got the color for it. Um... I will say this, because uh, I've been able to sort of hear the tenor and, and what the crowd thinks about things, and uh, I really follow this stuff, of course, don't I? And I will say that Cody was universally loved here. There was evidence um, during the um, match with the Go-Go that there was a portion of the crowd that wasn't really with him. But for this thing with QT, they were definitely with him. They were definitely glad he won. I'm sure there were smart marks that were quibbling about stuff, but I, as somebody who was there in the crowd, on the floor, in the middle of all of it, I can tell you that Cody was universally cheered. Um, afterwards, you had Sean Spears talking about this thing with Sammy in the chair, um, and then Sammy throws a chair from off <laughs> camera and pelts him, says, got you, bitch, um, to increase their thing. So, <clears throat> so, um, Kenny Omega's there, um, called to the ring, doing his thing. The Dark Order show up. Evil Uno cuts a promo. Um, then, uh, you know, the Bangkok joke by Omega. And then Paige comes out there. And I can tell you that the crowd is definitely ready um, after a very long time of Paige um, contending for this title. It is one of the better um, angles in wrestling that's taken place, and I'm talking about since the inception with Adam Page, how this whole thing has kind of come along with Omega and everything else. Yeah. So JR is there um, with Ethan Page, and uh, they talk about Darby that they don't do. They're not going to do the um, coffin match, but they're going to do it the following week. And Ethan Page and Darby sort of exchange barbs here. Um, I understand them putting off the match. Of course, I would have loved to see it, but I also get, um, I also respect the fact that they're not going to do a coffin match in Miami when all of that tragedy happened with the uh, collapsing condo. Um, when I was, I'm like sh actually two degrees of separation from people who were in that condo collapse. So it's a very, very sad thing. Um, and kudos for them to, to find a way to sort of stretch it out for a week. Uh, we got Dax Cash, Wardlow against Santana Ortiz and Jake Hager um, with uh, Blanchard and uh, Conan at ringside. <coughs> Tully's distracting um, at the end of this so FTR can hit their move on Hager and Wardlow can pick up the pin. It's the, it's the direction that they kind of needed to go on this war as it continues to go. My kids who had witnessed, you know, the stadium stampede and stuff live, were like, oh, this feud's still going on. And I'm like, it is indeed. It's kind of good because it's taking all the major players kind of out of the other stuff going on, like title match stuff and all the rest of it. It makes sense. And now we're going to have further stuff. But we're going to get to that with uh, Jericho and um, MJF later. 
So we have a video where Carl Anderson is challenging Mox for the NGPW US title. Um, Jericho and MJF have their things. Seeing that fan pop up there and then get punched by Jericho was really something else to see. Um, a reminder that like, oh yeah, crowds are back back, aren't they? Um, Jericho basically essentially has to beat four people to get to MJF. Makes sense. Um, and again, they're going with this format of five matches a card and getting a lot more people in there and advancing angles. Yeah? So Tony's talking to Britt. Baker, who's there with Rebel, and um, Britt um, is talking in like two weeks, going to defend against Nyla, um, gets that WWE diss about Saudi Arabia in there, that's no doubt going to get them a lot of attention, and it's smart. Um, then we have Matt Seidel against the debuting Andrade with Vicky. Um, Andrade ends up winning, of course, in a match that was pretty good. Um, it was definitely a back and forth. It was the wrestling match of the show, meaning this is the one where they really went back and forth for quite a while. Um, we get a video about Christian and uh, his feud with Matt Hardy. Um, Tony's there with Arn, uh, and then who shows up? Alistair, now um, Malachi, I believe. Malachi Black. Um, hits that beautiful kick on Arn, and then uh, Cody confronts him. And then the long short of it is he gets hit with that kick as well. I, uh, certainly a stellar debut. The crowd was all about this debut. All about it. And see, Cody, I think he and QT have now kind of ended their thing. Um, so now QT's group can kind of go on to other kind of feuds. Uh, maybe a feud with the Dark Order. Something like that. Um, and then Cody is now going to move on. And I think people are going to, you know, people who complain. It's like, Cody didn't put over QT. I don't think QT's group, QT's group making it onto the show and being a regular part of things is the victory already. Let's be honest. And now Cody can kind of take his sort of like, um, take, you know, the credibility that he has and um, give it to some uh, Malachi Black. I think that's a better way to sort of spend those chips on the poker table, as it were. Get a clip from Ricky Starks um, that we got to witness during Elevation, which is cool, which is him coming out with Security Force, um, kind of bad-mouthing Brian Cage, Taz confronting him about bad-mouthing Cage, um, and then Brian Cage eventually coming out and waylaying the security force and Ricky Starks getting away to set up their match that they're going to have next week, I believe. So again, most of this show, it's debuting stuff, new stuff, and advancing stuff for the next shows. Makes sense, yeah? Um, Bunny and Blade against uh, Orange Cassidy and Chris Statlander. Um, Chris Statlander eventually gets the win there. That's the long and short of it. That and the fact that they love Orange Cassidy. Love, love, love. The guy come out, Tony uh, cuts a promo, talks about BMX champ, a man in Nunez. <laughs> the long and short of it, it was very, very like old school, very like indie. Um, I say that like it's a bad thing. It's not. This guy comes out, runs his mouth, cut, does a really good heel promo, talking about this, that, and the other. And as he's kind of putting things over in AEW in a big way, that's too late, too little, too late. And Lance Archer comes out, hits him with the blackout. Funny stuff. And then finally, Eddie Kingston and Penta. Um, Eddie Kingston, who really, during the, com during the uh, part that the home audience did not see, really came out and cut a promo that sounded big time. I thought he was going to cut one afterwards. I was a little surprised he didn't. But uh, really a stellar match with the Young Bucks where they did everything that you could to make you think that the Bucks were maybe not going to win, even though logically you kind of knew the Bucks were going to retain. And they do at the end after a very good match. Uh, Eddie Kingston and Penta, though, look good in defeat.